Hello and welcome. In this video, we will talk about endometriosis. This is a difficult condition to understand. This video will be accompanied by a series of videos on the guidelines which have been published by the European Society of Human Reproduction and Embryology 2022. Go through all the videos to understand the latest guidelines for managing endometriosis, which is associated with infertility, cancer, adolescence, and menopause. By definition, Endometriosis is defined as the presence of endometriotic tissue outside the endouterine cavity. The extrauterine tissue possesses the same steroid receptors as normal endometrium and can respond to the normal cyclic changes in the hormones. So this tissue can also bleed and when it bleeds, there is internal bleeding in the peritoneal cavity with the subsequent response, neovascularization and fibrosis formation. And this causes pain, it causes adhesions, it causes distortion of tissue. Endometriosis is not an infl inflammation, but it does cause a very strong inflammatory response. It is not cancer, but it grows over time. A familial association exists with a tenfold increased incidence in women with an affected first degree relative. Monozygotic twins are markedly concordant for endometriosis. Unfortunately, this condition is common but poorly understood an extremely debilitating benign gynecologic condition. Patients will experience pain of varying degrees and this pain may be so severe that it will influence the quality of life. Often when endometriosis is associated with infertility, the pain is often exaggerated. Let's talk about how patients present. About one third of women with endometriosis will remain asymptomatic. In other words, if you do a laparoscopy or a laparotomy, you may find lesions suggestive of endometriosis in the pelvic peritoneum, but the patient may have had no symptoms. When symptoms are present, then these may vary and include dysmenorrhea, pelvic pain, lower abdominal pain, back pain, dyspareunia, dyskesia, bloating, nausea, and vomiting. So the patient may complain of increasing pelvic pain and secondary dysmenorrhea. This is very important to understand that the pain pattern has changed over time. They may even complain of painful bowel movements, diarrhea or even hematochesia in association with menses when endometriosis involves the rectum sigmoid colon. Dysuria, flank pain or hematuria may be present if the bladder or the ureters are involved. Cyclic pain that accompanies bleeding at the time of menstruation could involve the bladder in the form of hematuria, bowel in the form of hematochesia or pain in the painful def defecation plus blood in the stool or rarely bleeding at uncommon sites such as the umbilicus, abdominal wall, or perineum. Patients who are sexually active may report deep dyspareunia that is worst in the premenstrual phase of the cycle. Deep dyspareunia may be due to scarring of the uterosacral ligaments, nodularity of the rectovaginal septum, cul-de-sac obliteration and or uterine retroversion, all of which may lead to chronic backache. These symptoms are exaggerated during menses 
and women with deep infiltration of the uterosacral ligaments seem to have the most severe impairment of sexual function. On physical examination, you may not be able to get a lot of findings, but some findings may be present in the form of mild to moderate tenderness in the lower abdomen, on abdominal palpation, an abdominal mass if there are large endometriotic cysts, on vaginal examination, there will be tenderness with nodules felt in the fornices. There may be generalized non-specific pelvic tenderness. And there may be fixity of the uterus with tenderness on palpation. In other words, the uterus is not very movable on, pal on, on palpation, by manual palpation. A number of different conditions may be confused and are part of the differential diagnosis. And these include appendicitis, chlamydial infection, urinary tract infection and cystitis, diverticulitis, ectopic pregnancy, gonorrhea, ovarian cyst torsion, and pelvic inflammatory disease. If you suspect endometriosis, or if you have a diagnosed case of endometriosis, what laboratory investigations would you like to do? You would like to do a complete blood count with the differential. This may help to differentiate pelvic infection from endometriosis as well as to assess the degree of blood loss with irregular menstrual pattern. A urinalysis and urine culture will inform us and will exclude UTI in the differential diagnosis and cervical gram stain and cultures are necessary so as to exclude sexually transmitted diseases, which can also cause pelvic pain and infertility. Imaging diagnosis includes pelvic ultrasonography, hysterosalpingography, computerized tomographic scanning or CT scan, and intravenous pyrography and colonic studies. Not all of these studies is done in every patient with endometriosis, but in cases of, infect, of infertility, a hysterosalpingogram may reveal tubal occlusion or periadenexal adhesions. And CT scan would be recommended when there is a case of advanced disease and severe anatomic distortion. Intravenous pyrography and colonic studies are indicated if the clinical presentation suggests that the colon or the bladder is involved. So what do these uh, lesions look like if you have a look through laparotomy or through laparoscopy? On cross examination, the implants will appear as patches of endometrial like tissue, but they will differ in size and in color. Some are flat, some are raised, and uh, they some even have tissue you can see the tissue on top of it endometrial like tissue some uh, some patches will grow very deep and look like nodules or growths the lesion may be either clear or it may be brown or black or red or white and sometimes they can be described as powder burns or short, gunshot lesions when they are tiny black lesions which are spread over us or over a some small area. Sometimes they can also appear as punched out areas or reddish areas. Laparoscopy is considered the primary diagnostic modality for endometriosis and uh, but it is an invasive procedure and uh, it has an overall very high sensitivity for diagnosis and a specificity of only 77%. However, it is important to understand that the European Society Human Reproduction and Embryology Guidelines for 2022, the Guideline Development Group issued a statement which said that both diagnostic laparoscopy and imaging combined with empirical treatment can be considered in women who are suspected of endometriosis. In other words, if you get a patient who has symptoms of endometriosis and you put her on treatment 
and she responds to the treatment, then this can be acceptable as a diagnosis for that particular patient. This may be combined with ultrasound imaging, which is the commonest modality in terms of um, imaging technologies which are used in endometriosis. So ESHRAE guidelines say that there is no evidence of superiority of either approach and you should discuss this with the patient whether she would prefer to have a laparoscopy or whether she would go ahead and uh, start treatment and see what the response of the treatment is because if the treatment response comes back positive that means you have made an empirical diagnosis of endometriosis. The most common sites of involvement which are found during laparoscopy are the ovaries, the posterior cul-de-sac or the pouch of Douglas, the broad ligament which is maybe in the posterior aspect usually and um, the uterocecal ligaments, a very common site, rectosigmoid colon, bladder and distal ureter. Generally the distal ureter is, is not so easily seen in routine laparoscopies and you need a higher expertise to be able to visualize the entire ureter and to be able to say that the ureter is free of disease or whether there is involvement of endometriosis in the superficial peritoneum of the ureters. The histologic demonstration of a combination of endometrial glands and stroma in the biopsy specimens obtained from outside the uterine cavity is, is a gold standard in the diagnosis of endometriosis. But every patient does not need this, this gold standard diagnosis. And as the ESHRAE guidelines have suggested that even clinical diagnosis of endometriosis, especially if there is a positive feedback to treatment, can be taken as a diagnosis of endometriosis in a patient. So the difficult uh, aspect of endometriosis is that there are often complications of endometriosis which can affect the quality of life of the woman. And these um, complications fall into three categories. The first one is infertility or subfertility. The second one is chronic pelvic pain or pain associated with other organs and subsequent disability because of the pain. And the third one is the anatomic disruption of involved organ system, for example, due to adhesions or due to rupture of the ovarian cysts, other organ systems may be involved. Endometriosis has also been linked to have an adverse outcome during pregnancy as compared to women who do not have endometriosis. And so women with endometriosis have a higher chance of aborting the baby as compared to those without endometriosis. The FICO classification of endometriosis is very old, but we are still using it because it, of the lack of any other uh, classification. So for communication between surgeons and between gynecologists, we tend to use this classification. This classification can only be used if you are doing a laparoscopy or if you are doing a laparotomy. And this classification does not really give us the functional aspect of the disease and the, and the the way that it is affecting the quality of life of the patient. So it is divided into four stages and with each uh, developing stage, the lesions will increase in size, will increase in number and will increase in depth. And in stage three, uh, there will be filmy adhesions, whereas in stage four, there will be thick adhesions and distortion of the pelvic organs. The treatment of endometriosis is um, directed toward uh, alleviation of symptoms, uh, medical suppression of the menstrual cycle and the endometrial tissue, surgical excision, if that is the demand because of the severity of pain or because of the presence of ovarian cysts, and infertility when the patient demands. Endometriotic tissue is being stimulated by the ovarian hormones Therefore, to suppress those hormones, a number of drugs are used and recommended, and these include combined oral contraceptive pills, danazole, progestational agents, and anti-progesterone, namely gestrinone. As far as progestational agents are concerned, 
there is no medical evidence to show that any one has a superiority over the other. We use non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for pain relief. Ibuproxen and naproxen are often used to treat pain. Surgical management of endometriosis can broadly be classified as conservative when their reproductive potential is retained, semi-conservative when reproductive ability is eliminated, but ovarian function is retained, and radical when the uterus and the ovaries are removed. In conservative surgery, the different kinds of treatment that can be offered include drainage, and laparoscopy cystectomy, ablation of the endometriotic tissue, presacral neurectomy, and laparoscopic uterine nerve ablation. Semi-conservative surgery is indicated for women who have completed childbearing, are too young to undergo surgical menopause, and, but are debilitated by the symptoms. And such surgery may involve hysterectomy and cytoreduction of the pelvic endometriotic tissue. Ovarian endometriosis can be removed surgically because one tenth of functioning ovarian tissue is all that is needed for hormone production. Women who undergo hysterectomy with ovarian conservation have a six times higher chance of recurring compared to those women who, in whom the ovaries have been removed. In radical surgery, total abdominal hysterectomy with bilateral sacral oophorectomy is performed. And uh, uh, this is uh, indicated when uh, uh, patient symptoms are very severe, when there is associated changes of carcinomatous histology changes in the endometriotic tissue, or if the patient desires to have this surgery for very severe pain. Adhesial lysis is performed at the same time to restore mobility and normal intrapelvic organ relationships. So the prognosis in endometriosis is uh, different in different patients. In about one third of patients, it will resolve spontaneously, even though the women are not being actively treated. But in the other two third, there will be progressive disease with unpredictable extent of progression and subsequent morbidity. Although most patients respond to medical therapy, such therapy is ineffective for treatment of endometriosis associated infertility but does preserve the potential for conception. If patients have been managed medically, then you have to continue the treatment for a long period of time because if you do not continue the treatment, the patient will come back uh, with return of symptoms. With this, we come to the end of our video. If you have liked this video, then please subscribe, like, share and comment and press the link for the for notification of future videos thank you and goodbye